So in a nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction, we essentially have a nucleophile and we have some kind of acyl group. And they go through a reaction where the nucleophile attacks. When it attacks, it forms a bond. And when it forms that bond, it pushes these pi electrons up onto this oxygen. So when we do that, we form this tetrahedral intermediate, where again, we formed a bond represented by this bond. And then we push these pi electrons up onto the oxygen, creating this tetrahedral oxygen anionic intermediate. And then what would happen is because this localized formal charge of negative one is unstable, that localized charge is unstable, essentially the electrons would fall back down, forming a double bond, and when they do that, we would break this bond. And the electrons in this bond would fall on this Y compound, forming this product. So this general mechanism is referred to as nucleophilic acyl substitution. And it's a substitution because this Y compound is being substituted for this X compound, which was our original nucleophile. So this general mechanism is referred to as nucleophilic acyl substitutions. So let's do an example. Let's say we have this water nucleophile, and let's say we have this acyl chloride. And again, we know this carbon, this carbon and carbonyls are very electrophilic. Why is this carbon so electrophilic? Well, it has these bonds to these oxygen and chloride atoms, which are very electronegative. These are very electronegative atoms pulling a lot of electron density. And as they pull electron density, we create an electron deficiency on this carbon. So we have an electrophilic carbon. So this oxygen nucleophile with its lone pairs of electrons can attack this carbon electrophile. When it does that, it forms a bond. And when it forms that bond, it pushes these pi electrons up onto this oxygen. So when we do that, we form this tetrahedral intermediate. And again, so again, we attacked, so we formed a bond, so that bond's represented by this bond, then we push these pi electrons up, forming this oxygen anionic intermediate. And again, remember, there's two hydrogens, so really there's two hydrogens, but we would immediately deprotonate one, creating this tetrahedral intermediate. But we know this, this formal charge of negative one localized on this oxygen is unstable. So what we do is to collapse this, this charge, the electrons essentially fall back down, when they fall back down, they form a double bond, and when they do that, they break one of these bonds. However, which bond will be broken? When these electrons fall down, forming that double bond, which bond is broken? Is this bond broken, this bond, or this bond? Which of these three bonds will be broken? Well, let's think about it. Let's imagine the electrons falling down, forming that double bond, breaking this bond with these electrons falling on this chlorine. If we did that, what product would we form? Well, we would form a product that looks like this. The electrons fall down, forming that double bond, so we represent that double bond, and then we break this bond, these electrons fall on this chlorine, forming this chloride. So that's one option. That's option one. However, we could also have these electrons fall down, forming a double bond, and therefore breaking this bond, with these electrons falling on this alcohol. And when we do that, we would form this product, this product, where again, the electrons fell down, breaking this bond, these electrons fall on this alcohol, forming this hydroxide. And a third option we could have is essentially the electrons falling back down, forming that double bond, and breaking this bond. And if this bond was broken and these electrons fall on this hydrogen, we would form this hydride. So therefore, once this oxygen nucleophile attacks and we form this tetrahedral intermediate, there are three pathways we could go. We could, do, we could form these products, these products, or these products. So which of these three products are we going to form? Well, it depends on the stability of these leaving groups, these leaving groups. So once we form this tetrahedral intermediate, we look at all these leaving groups and we see which one is the most stable leaving group. So is chloride, hydroxide, or hydride more stable? And whichever one has the most stable leaving group will, will, will determine our product. So how do we quantitatively determine which of these leaving groups is most stable? Well, what you do, the trick is, is you, you look at them, you look at these, these leaving groups, these as, as, essentially as their acids, imagining them as conjugate acids. For example, let's look at hydrochloric acid. And, and we th think, is hydrochloric acid a strong acid? Well, we know it has a very low pKa, a pKa of negative 7, and we know the lower the pKa, the stronger the acid. So we know hydrochloric acid is a very strong acid. So why does this have such a low pKa? Why is it such a strong acid? Well, when this acts as an acid, what happens? Well, we know something, some kind of compound gets protonated, and when it gets protonated, we know this bond breaks and these electrons fall on this chlorine, forming this chloride leaving group, this chloride conjugate base. And so essentially what's happening is, is chlorine is essentially acting as a leaving group. It's essentially identical. When these electrons fell down, forming that double bond, and we broke this bond, and these electrons fall on this chlorine, it's essentially identical where you could just imagine this hydrogen as this entire group, where again, this bond breaks, these electrons fall on this chlorine, and this chlorine acts as a leaving group. It's the same idea. This bond breaks, electrons fall on this chlorine, and the chlorine acts as a leaving group. And we know this chloride is very stable. It's a very stable conjugate base. 
Why? Well, it's a fairly large atom. Chlorine is a fairly large atom, and it's relatively electronegative. So that formal charge of negative one is delocalized over a larger area because it's a large atom. So we have a smaller charge density because that charge is delocalized over a large area. So that's stable, that's favorable, and also it's fairly electronegative, so it doesn't mind that negative charge. So because of that, this chlorine, this chloride, and, and this chlorine was a very good leaving group. This, this was a very good leaving group, so we know this is very stable. However, let's look at this example. Is this a strong acid? Well, when this acts as an acid, what happens? Something gets protonated. When it gets protonated, this bond breaks and these electrons fall in this hydrogen, forming this hydride. Is this hydride stable? Well, no. Hydrogen is a tiny atom. It's a tiny atom. So that formal charge of negative one is localized over a small region with the high charge density, which is not stable. And also hydrogen isn't electronegative. It doesn't like that negative charge. So this is incredibly unstable. So that explains why this has such a high pKa. And again, the higher the pKa, the weaker the acid. So this is a weak acid. Why? Because this hydride is a terrible the conjugate base, it's very unstable and it's essentially a bad leaving group. When this acts as an acid, this bond breaks, electrons fall in this hydrogen, and it essentially acts as a leaving group. And we know hydride is incredibly unstable. So therefore, it's the same idea with if these electrons were to fall down, breaking this bond with these electrons falling on this hydrogen, it would form this hydride, which is incredibly unstable. So now we know we can look at the pKa's of, of these co relative conjugate acids, look at the pKa's and we can determine chloride is very stable, Hydride is incredibly unstable. So therefore, chloride is very stable. Hydride is incredibly unstable. And again, this is in the middle. So therefore, we know chloride is very stable. This is a little less stable, and this is very unstable. So therefore, this is the most stable. So therefore, these are the products we would expect. And in reality, there's going to be an equilibrium of, of all products being made, but, but the majority of the, the vast majority are going to be these products because they create the most stable leaving group. So once we form this tetrahedral intermediate, we, we have a choice to make. The electrons fall down forming that double bond and we have to break one of these bonds. So which bond do we break? Well, the worst of all these three evils is breaking this bond because if this bond breaks and these electrons fall in this chlorine, at least we have a somewhat decent leaving group which is stable, so therefore these are the products that are gonna be made. So therefore, this is the product. So when we, we have this reaction, the water attacks essentially forming a bond and that, that bond's represented here, then this bond breaks, these electrons fall in this chlorine, forming this chloride, and that's our reaction, where again, it's a nucleophilic acyl substitution because we have a nucleophile, and we have an acyl, and it's substitution because this chlorine is being substituted for this original nucleophile.